So we're talking about the role of residuals here. And what a residual is, is the distance between an actual data point and the answer calculated from the least squared regression line, the predicted data point. Quick, easier way to remember this, it's AP stats, and it's always the actual minus the predicted. This is going to be probably the best thing to think about here. What you're going to want to do, if you draw a least squared regression line and you compare the actual point to the point on the least squared regression line, what you're looking at, if you have a point above the least squared regression line, that would be a positive residual. You have a point below, that will be a negative residual. Now, it's a little bit easier to show you right here. So here's my prediction line. And last class we saw how these were squares that came out like this. This right here would represent a positive residual. Here's my actual. Here's my predicted. And this is for 24 degree days per day, heating degree days per day. So at x equal 24, the actual value was, let's say, 6.3. Our predicted value was 5.6. So my residual would be 6.3 minus 5.6. Again, actual minus predicted, which is 0.7 positive. And that should make some sense here because it's positive because this was above the axis. So, let me give you another one that we did last class. Last class, we did this problem here where we started by looking at the, the femur length and the humerus length of our extinct beast. And what we were able to do is we calculated the least squared regression line, and we got this down here. So this was our prediction right here. For step four, we predicted the humerus when the femur was 59. And what we did here is we plugged 59 in here, and we have a predicted humerus length of 66.9575. Now, if I want to find the residual at femur equals 59, it'll be the actual minus the predicted. In this case here, the actual value at 59 was 70. So it'll be 70 minus 66.9575. So 70 minus 66.9575 is positive 3.0425. And it is positive. Now let me explain to you what that means here. So if I would take this and I grab just this part of it here. Just thinking about this stuff. That's what we just came up with, and we realized that we would have a positive residual. That means down here, I had my femur, and I had the humerus, and I had some line here. Actually, I'll make it have a negative y intercept since it had a negative y intercept here. What I'm saying is, here was 59. Here was my predicted value of 66.9575. And above it, a little bit, was 70, to give me a difference between them of positive point, uh, excuse me, point 3.0425 for my residual. So that's how you calculate a residual. Most importantly, though, is when you're dealing with a residual, what I want you to realize is you're looking for this. You want a residual that shows no pattern. You're looking for, if I would plot the residuals on Y against X, I want something that would look like this. I want it to look like I took a handful of BBs and I threw them on the wall and I have no pattern. So we want, so let me put it this way. A good least squared regression line shows no pattern in the residual plot. In the residual plot. 
So that's what a good least weight regression line has, no pattern in the residual plot. And in case you're wondering what would a pattern look like, if you would have this right here, if we would have this plot here for our residual plot, we would say a least squared regression line is not a good model because the residual plot, the residual plot shows a pattern. And here it's pretty easy to see the pattern. We can see that pattern there. And that is a no-go, not a good model. So that's it for residual plots. And you'll be doing your work from there.